mean, I pretty much go for a campaign thinking that this is a test and learn. Aspirate. Things can go wrong. Yeah. You can fail, but yeah. no problems. You'll learn. Regular phone call आती है. You just cut the phone right away. If the phone call starts with their name, in a Mitra Bachchan Ji's voice. Yeah, I mean, ultimately it drills down and creates that wow impact with the consumer. Hmm. When the consumer sees that final output, he says, "Wow." ऐसा तो मैंने कभी कुछ देखा ही नहीं है, right? This might be a tricky one. It's like asking, uh, you know, uh, the father, "What your favorite? Who your favorite child is?" But like, if there's one campaign, as a uh, cliche, but uh, I have to ask you this. Thank you so much, Neeraj, for doing this. First of all, uh, really appreciate you know you spending the time uh, coming through all the Mumbai traffic. Uh, it's pleasure. Let's just start with just knowing you better. Would like to get an introduction uh, for the broader audience. I know the industry knows you, but uh, I think this should reach the masses. So, would love to know more about you. All right, guys. So, I'm Neeraj. I lead uh, the emerging tech practice for Group M and WPP in India. Personally, I like doing a lot of uh, innovative stuff, and looking forward to this podcast with uh, my friend Anupreet here. Thank you so much. Thanks so much again for doing this, Neeraj. I just want to get started by knowing more about your career, the way you moved up the ladders across, uh, you know, different. Agencies, different roles, and now finally you are actually leading the charge for technology at large. You know, for this industry, which I call consumer brands at large, for the lack of better knowledge that I have, I'm I'm very new into the world. But I just see that every fun campaign that any brand is doing, you know, is led by you. Before we get to the uh, by my team, I would say <laughs> a large team that works behind the show. Oh no, of course, and and that's that's humbleness speaking right there. <laughs> but but I actually want to know, uh, Neeraj, from you, like before you got here, like. If someone wants to reach where you've reached, what what are the few things that you did right in the process? I I want to be a listener to that because I'm very new to this world. So yeah, I mean, I would say uh, I was someone like a hardcore Gemini, someone who loves to like gets bored really fast. Yeah. So I would have loved to experiment with a lot of new stuff. So curiosity would be the right word. I mean, I I was always curious from day zero, even when I was in college. I always wanted to do new stuff all the way, right? and never that focused in life i would say i mean i was very very uh, very difficult to get my focus on certain stuff but yeah if if something is new and it's exciting that that something used to you know catch my eyes and i used to feel like okay this is something i want to go ahead and, and crack it in a big way something is which has to stand out yeah. that was the first uh, self real- realization of, of of myself what i realized saying that okay let's get into a profession and that's one of the reasons i never chose my family business mm. because at a at a at a certain point i i thought that this is getting very mundane and boring yeah and always wanted a unique identity to myself and i thought uh, god has gifted me with so much talent in so many ways yeah. like i used to like perform i used to be an artist at some point in time i used to model so again this is a classic trait which is not letting you do one stuff But you are like constantly moving and trying new stuff and, out there. And I want to go deeper into each one of those first before we get into the stuff that probably the larger audience knows, right? So first, family business. Uh, you know, like, uh, for how long did you do that? What were the years when you were in the family business? And and from what I know, you know, personally, I think you know you were doing pretty well. Your family is doing pretty well in the business. Like, what motivated you to get out of that and then hustle all the way to you know like make yourself a CXO uh, or a leader in the industry? uh while you could have just joined as a cxo right into your family business which is significantly large in yeah, yeah so what was the motivation and when did you actually attempt the family business to begin with yeah i mean in in your careers you come across a lot of leaders right you keep following a lot of leaders in and around you even in your uh society or people you meet so one of the guys i met uh, kind of inspired me in a way saying that uh, this is something which comes very organically to you uh but if you don't enjoy it now imagine how will you enjoy it couple of years down the line so eventually you are born to make money and fame yeah. that's part of the game yeah but it's just that you want to excel in which direction is something you need to consciously take a call so i i did join for textile was our uh, big forte then mm. and i did go to saspera institute of textile in worli i oh. did, i did learn that space i i gave it another 6 months to understand if i actually like it or if i want to go ahead and pursue it mm. and the answer which kept coming back from deep within is no this is too boring let's try something else yeah. and then every every 6 months every 3 months i mean opportunities kept knocking me yeah like there was a there was a print shoot and it used to look like really good then if i yeah. look so decent now so <laughs> so i used to go for it like i used to go give auditions fail and if, if you keep failing you keep learning a lot of new stuff mm. and that pretty much applies to my current campaigns as well mm. 
I mean, I pretty much go for a campaign thinking that this is a test and learn. Aspiration. Things can go wrong. Yeah. You can fail, but yeah. no problems. You'll learn. But at the same time, we go to have the leadership. Yeah. Like we do. Yeah. I mean, they and even a lot of good friends now on the client side who back you and they say that, okay, you want to try this new stuff? Okay, here's a small budget. Mm. We call it test and learn budget. Go for it. Stay away from PNL. Stay close to TNL as we call it. And try and uh, maneuver things around. And if it's a big hit, then it ends up creating... Yeah. Uh, global headlines. We've seen a lot of our campaigns which have made really big. Absolutely. So all in all, um, I would say, yeah, that the curiosity, hmm. uh, that took me further from where I was hmm. to learning new stuff. And right now, my goal would be pretty much like trend spotting and trend shaping. So every six months or every two months when you meet me at our experience center, you'll be, I'll be talking some new stuff because I'm constantly learning. Hmm. Not just from uh, world leaders, but also from our colleagues, folks like you, the startup ecosystem. Love to spend a lot of time with them. But that's a different DNA of people altogether. Yeah. Like hardcore risk takers. Yeah. So there's so much to learn around you yeah. and people who are around you. That itself becomes a motivating factor to keep trying new stuff out there. And then when you succeed, then there is a big lobby of people who want to be like you. Yeah. Who want to actually say that, okay, why can't we make a career in uh, advertising, do something new out there yeah. and stuff like that. So the journey continues. But then when early on, you know, when you were so experimental and so risk-taking early on uh, and when you failed, uh, you know, like what was the motivation to just go back and try again when you had the safe path every single time to go back to your family business and continue that? Yeah. What was the motivation to continue to see failures, continue to have like a boss? See, when you are, when the, when the rush is to create an identity of yourself, yeah, then all this won't matter. And if you are passionate about something really in your yeah. life, then all this won't matter. Then you will just go for it. And I've been like absolutely lucky to get some amazing bosses mm. initially in my day and the kind of mentoring which I got. So a lot of my bosses taught me a lot of new stuff in their own way. Mm. So if I've learned a lot of unique traits from a lot of these leaders. And uh, yeah, I've been lucky, I would say. Sometimes it gets very demotivating mm. when you come across a manager. Yeah who is kind of not supporting your uh, wacky thoughts. Yeah. And if he turns down all the wacky ideas which you come up with, yeah. then you might feel demoralized saying that, I mean, how can he tell me something like this? Yeah, exactly. Right. So I think the the race to create an identity is something which is a perennial problem with uh, all the people who are born with uh, a golden spoon, like yeah. they say, right? So everyone wants to create, a, make a mark. And it, it's very difficult to pivot. Yeah. That's something I would totally agree. Because for someone like me, my, both of my parents uh, were into government jobs. Uh, so for me, I didn't have a plan B. So I would, you know, hustle through it, even if, if I had rough days, because I knew that I don't have a plan B. Yeah. For someone like you who had a very beautiful plan B, you know, like just hustling through it, even when, you know, you know that, you know, this is, I, I, I deserve better, you know, like I have been treated much better throughout my life. And, you know, if I go to that plan B, I'll make a lot more money than I would uh, if I continue here. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just it's, it's phenomenal uh, to just see someone, you know, really, really hustling through those days. Because now, I, I'm sure, you know, now you're already like, you know, a champion in your space and everyone would pay you whatever you'd want. Uh, but in those days, just assuming, just, just, just thinking about the fact that you got through it uh, yeah, yeah. and you didn't go back to that world yeah. Uh, yeah. is inspirational. Yeah, it's all about... I mean, I think it's everything is destiny at the end of the day. But you got to focus on what you want to do or what excites you. Because yeah. something that doesn't excite you, maybe you'll be able to do it for a year or two. Yeah. What happens later on then? And this is something what I'm doing right now. It really excites me. There's a constant learning yeah. which is happening. Absolutely. Right? And then True. and then there's a constant uh, learning which even percolates further yeah. from me to my clients. So I keep meeting a lot of people. I make sense out of it. And what's in it for a marketer? Then I go run workshops for them. Mm. And that's how they start connecting with my thought process in terms of, there are a lot of tech stack available, right? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and, and there's so much marketers are looking at it and feeling so cluttered. Yeah. If you go to Google right now and punch AI companies, will be like loaded with so many oh, of absolutely. them. How do you identify the right guys? How do you use creativity, the messaging, right kind of partner to deliver a campaign? That's super critical. Yeah. So over the years, you learn the tricks of the trade. Mm. And... Um, Somewhere you end up making great friends on the marketer side as well. Yes. And the equity plays a role. So obviously over the years, your leaderships will back you. The client leaderships will back you and you'll be able to pull off a campaign which otherwise uh, looked pretty difficult in that sense. Yeah. Because not all of them are risk takers. So you've got to so actually you know, drill down your passion for your subject yeah. to them and identify a similar kind of a, a person on the other side. 
I mean, when I go and meet marketers, I also pick my clients. You know, a lot of mm-hmm. clients are like sparky like me. Yeah. A lot of CMOs I meet now, they want to do the new, do it first. Yeah. Create headlines. Those are my guys. I mm-hmm. focus on them. Yeah. And I, I put a lot of hard work along with them and our teams to pull off these campaigns. Yeah. And obviously with great support from Startup Ecosystem, which I say would be the most agile players in our ecosystem. If I go to a large company and ask them to make some tweaks <laughs> on a yeah. big campaign, which I have yeah. planned, because yeah. most of our ideas are like the industry first idea, so they are very wacky. Yeah. And most of the big techs would say, no, 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 we cannot change the platform for you. You come up with some yeah. serious idea. Yeah. It's damn creative. It's yeah. fabulous. It's going to win you awards, but we're not going to go that way and make those tweaks. Yeah. And somewhere with the startup ecosystem, I found a zone where I was able to deliver a lot of these tweaks, maneuver yeah. it, and uh, make it perfect for a marketer's requirement, which ultimately drills down and creates that wow impact with the consumer. Hmm. The consumer sees that final output, he says, wow, right? and that's where the marketer falls in love with it. All the while, what was happening was agencies are focusing on solving a marketer's problem. Hmm. But now I'm seeing a lot of it, marketers are now starting to create solutions to solve a consumer problem as well. Yeah, I'm seeing that as well. And that and, and that's where I think players like you and AI is yeah. playing a killer role out there. But I think I think one other thing that I want to attribute to you and and I just want to know where where that comes from, where that you know inspiration comes from. The way you help the startup ecosystem of the country, uh, you know, I've seen you work very hard to you know like put a particular campaign in front of your brand. But in the process of that campaign, there are two startups involved in the back end. Yeah. That would otherwise not get that chance. Um, in fact, like most of the people like us, right, uh, don't know, understand, we don't understand the agency business at all. We don't know, you know, what is happening on the marketer side of things. We like, honestly, like uh, hand to heart, I did not know the difference between, you know, uh, a creative agency uh, and a media agency before I joined GAN. Because yeah. I was like neck deep into, you know, like SaaS and building for B2B companies and, yeah. you know, like for the last 10 years. But I was just a consumer of these ads. Uh, I would just see the ad and appreciate it and move on. Like I would never think that behind the scenes there's a, you know, there's a media agency and a creative agency and 10 other, uh, you know, WPP itself has so many agencies. It's it's a, it's a, it's a very complex world out there that you guys have created for someone like me to come in and understand, you know, in even in one year. People like you actually help us literally babysit that process and, you know, understand that process to the extent that we can literally contribute to that campaign as effectively as we eventually do. One, what is your motivation to, you know, help these startups out? Uh, two, uh, how can how do you be so patient with people like us who have no experience and can, can make a lot of mistakes in the process versus a much more established, uh, you know, company out there that can probably do it uh, in a much more stabilized way. I wouldn't say better than, than us, but in a stabilized way because they've, they, they know the pitfalls. I run my own practice like a startup in our organization because every month when marketers would reach out to me, they would say, if you're speaking to Neeraj, you'll get to learn something new. That's the expectation, right? Yeah. So you are always starting from zero in terms of uh, new solutions or ideation. Because when the novelty value of uh, technology fades, mm. they will look for new solutions out there. And that's pretty much startups would work for initially yeah. when they're trying to crack an idea and stuff like that. So I consider my practice internally more like an agile uh, set of guys who are thinking the future and who are constantly building prototypes, working with... Uh, uh, what do you call uh, creative folks and also on the client side to build a lot of these creatively charged campaigns out there. And some of them fail, some of them succeed. And like I said, it ends up creating like a lot of noise in our industry. But yeah, coming back to the the startup ecosystem, personally, I like the, uh, like the space a lot in terms of the young guys who are trying to make a difference. Yeah. And they're trying to, and every time I meet them, like I remember meeting Ashray, uh, got, it's a company got acquired by yeah. Adobe recently, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rephrase.ai. Yes. When I met him for the first time and uh, I was undergoing his presentation, he told me like, uh, we do synthetic AI, we create uh, avatars and stuff like that. And I was like, oh my God, this is the 10th partner <laughs> I'm going to be evaluating. And at that point in time, uh, for us to create a synthetic avatar, yeah. Uh, used to take about 10 hours of original content reading from the yeah. script. Remember long? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So green screen, I used to sit there yeah. and read the script for 10 hours to create my own clone. Yeah. So I I, I was going through whatever Ashray was saying and then we used to have like serious legal hurdles. Mm-hmm. A lot of our league, my friends on the legal side used to say, oh my God, this can be like really scary, you know, why are you getting into all this? But I used to create a lot of my clones mm-hmm. and I used to place them on a presentation. When I used to go and meet a client, I used to say, 
this is not me, this is my clone. You get over two and a half, half yeah, yeah, yeah. years back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And clients just get super excited saying that, you are not a clone. I said, yes, I can say anything about it. I used to create those panels and all and create intrigue and excitement. Hmm. Then it took me about uh, six months to get the legal conversations in order. And by the time, I think West started landing some campaigns as well. So I think the first clone we ever did was with Rithik Roshan for a Raksha Bandhan campaign. This was with Ashray. Right. And uh, and again, when when I met him, he was like full of enthusiasm and yeah. a lot of like like the way he is, like yeah, a very happy I've personality. Met him as well, yeah. And then uh, you must ask him if you do a podcast with him in terms of yeah. how much of mentoring and workshops which we did together, like across multiple agencies, so many connects, so many times he visited us, so many online webinars yeah. where uh, he was being asked tough questions. Yeah. And uh, together we were stitching a narrative for marketers that how this can be used for. Personalized yeah. messaging and look at now. I think he delivered a campaign where Synthetic AI is pretty much sitting on top of the Martech stack. Yeah. And characters of Diya Mirza for brands like Biko are Correct. selling products as well. Correct. So it's pretty much up there. Now with uh, generative AI and some serious engineering, we are getting these avatars to talk a yeah. particular subject. If you see our recent campaign on Britannia and Golmal. Right. On the cricketing season, we got Ravi Shastri, India's ex coach, to give cricketing advice over WhatsApp. That was, that so was cool. super brilliant. That was right? very cool. So now, yeah. so a lot of cool stuff is uh, picking up. So yeah. when I keep meeting a lot of these startups, I spend a lot of time. Easily, they must be working with me for at least six months yeah. without with zero revenue. Yeah. yeah. So they got to be invested yeah. and they got to believe in me that yes, the work will happen. Yeah. And then I help them maneuver the system. Uh, all the workshops which I do for my clients, I run a, a one and a half hour creative tech module for a lot of our clients. And now we've got our experience centers in Gurgaon and. Mumbai. So we've yeah. got a place where clients are visiting. But in those days, I used to go with a lot of hardware mm. to client locations and run a lot of show and tell. Wow. And that's why I used to get uh, uh, guys like Rephrase or Bobble.ai. That's another yeah. startup we mentored. And now we won our first can with them yes. for Unilever Dub, yes. which you know, right? Yes. We've been doing some fabulous work with you guys as well. Yes. Whether it's the birthday song or the uh, my most favorite would be the work which we did on Shikhar. Yeah. and Unilever, right? Yes. That was That's fabulous. Yes. That's giving a different level of empowerment to retailers out there. Absolutely. On a super app which they own. It's, it's amazing. So, yeah. sky is the limit in terms of what a startup can do if the handholding is perfect in the industry and the ecosystem, if they are positioned well. Yeah. And if people are able to understand with a use case, not just their product, but with a use case. Someone comes and says, I can do a synthetic AI, with someone coming and saying, I can do synthetic AI for five different purposes for different categories. Hmm. What's in it for CPG? What's in it for auto? Yeah. If someone comes with a idiot proof solution to an agency, yeah. agency will make a sense out of it. And since they work on comms, they'll be the best guys to think creatively yeah. how this tech can be embedded into an existing promo. Yeah. And it can deliver value for the client. Yeah. So so all that. It was just about perfect partnership, handholding with the startup ecosystem. Yep. And Startup Accelerator as a program is being around for a while now. Yep. And I think uh, the bunch of startups I've been really fortunate to partner with, all of them have done well, yep. including you guys, and okay. now doing a lot of good stuff out there. So it's a commitment from either side. But for me, the passion remains. If you meet me another two years down the line, I might be excelling in something else with some other startup, but exactly doing the same thing. Yeah. So it's, for you, it's all about, you know, contributing to the larger to the, to the greater good of the you know consumer brands but then also making sure that you are learning constantly and changing and evolving uh, you know over time yeah this might be a tricky one it's like asking uh, you know uh, the father what your favorite who your favorite child is but like if there's one campaign and this is a cliche but uh, I have to ask you this uh, if there's one campaign that you always think will be the closest to your heart uh, you know what, what which, which is that campaign there are so many yeah but if I were to divide, uh, uh, you know, into, you know, like at a many India level, yeah, like there is a India which we know, which we are part of, and we are having this conversation with highly elite people, yeah, who are like really the rich guys of India, yeah. and there are many Indias who exist within India. Oh yeah, call it the Bharat and rural. Yeah. So that's that's something which is my forte in mm -hmm. a big way mm -hmm. because I've been known initially when I started my career. I was all about inclusion, that mm. if I can create a solution for upmarket Indian, why can't I build a solution using voice tech mm. or bottom of the pyramid? And when I started, I think uh, dumb phones or feature phones in India sat at around 650 million in my days, right, mm. when I started. So, mm. and government launched this program called Kilkari. So when mm. a baby is born, they capture mother's number and then they send out a lot of health and hygiene information oh, to the mother, right? In 2013, we moved to a platform called DTMF. Mm. 
which is nothing but dual tone multiple frequency ability of a voice call to press a key and invoke a content so kan khajura station was a big hit like a community radio platform wow. by unilever and, and those days we ended up doing lot of campaign using speech as well like mm-hmm. pocket dentist of colgate yeah you know so you pick up a call and you say daato mein sadan it reads sadan as a keyword it throws an output back so people who are not literate enough owning yeah. say a 2 dollar 3 dollar kind of a phone you are still reaching them using a technology and making a dent in their life adding value to it Absolutely. and getting the brand along in mm-hmm. terms of the messaging so that pretty much drove me saying that oh my god there's so much change we are bringing in and in that journey we partnered with so many maverick advertisers like i still remember uh godrej goodnight fast card ki patshala we created which was like a simple number even if you don't have internet on your phone call up on the number and it will teach you small english statements suprabhat ko english mein kehte hain good morning beep ke baad aap bole good morning Are. so the villager will say good morning with whatever diction oh, wow. my system will rank him oh wow. or her saying that you got it with 60% accuracy and we teach them small statements this is which year this was ages back 2005 oh 2015 15 i think 15 and and before so when maybe. when speech to text and text to speech was just yeah so look at kilkari was a one way broadcasting platform yeah. 2013 was all about era of dtmm then came pocket and discuss speech then look at axis bank and city banks biometric numbers where people can call up and you say my voice is my password your voice gets into it as a password you don't need those tin numbers of the world just enter and just you read anupreet's voice and you can maneuver the platform right now look at satya nadella he was talking about a service called bhashini currently yeah 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 but government pick now government is spending uh, close to 100 crore on a 40 day project on nlt yes. natural language translation mission yes you're yes. aware yeah and modi ji was currently talking i was uh, in one of the forums he was talking about ai and how language is getting translated yes so he speaks in hindi yes. but the guys from karnataka will get to hear it in kannada in real time absolutely right i saw the same prototype yeah. with one of the companies in imc as well yeah so all that i think tech stack for inclusion Hmm. completely drove me to a different level saying that here there is a lot of problem hmm. in this part of india and there is lot of scope to create really sci-fi supercharged utility driven service for these audience without they having to do lot of hard work hmm. now look at podcast in india it's at 93 odd million i think pwc yeah. number our report says about 60 million but look at pmk man ki baat as a podcast is just 600 million people yeah so voice vernacular telephony club yeah. it Yeah. Give it a language support. I think uh, PM के मन के बाद is available in 19 languages. Correct. Currently, right. uh, India has got 22 Maki languages, 780 dialects and dictions. So there's a way to go. Like Google Wani is a uh, service is yeah. focused on cracking that barrier, yeah. right? Yeah. So there's so much happening in that space. Now imagine current era, yeah. clubbing voice AI with generative AI. Yeah. You can do personalized calling. You can create core utility, which used to be DTM driven in those days. Yeah. Currently, sky is the limit. Yeah. And again, again, those ten dollar phones are now coming with WhatsApp inbuilt. Yes. WhatsApp again goes vernacular. Yes. Imagine, and we are working on a campaign together. Yeah. Which is about stitching a one way call to an opt in to a regional personalized video, which will get pushed out through WhatsApp to that consumer. Yes. In rural Bharat, it's going to create an high which consumer would have never ever thought. Yeah. कि आज एक शाहरुख़ खान अबन में बात करता है. That's given. हमें पता है true uh, fan apps uh, 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 lots is happening in synthetic yeah. AI. take it a notch down and have those dialogue with those users out there it's going to resonate like absolutely not the level right and then listen right i mean uh, the the att- attention span that you get from the user when you actually call them by their name uh, is phenomenal i mean yeah. some case studies we realize that five times more people complete the video message if it starts with their name yeah. so more than the innovation part of it the impact especially in the rural india when you want to tell them you know like why they should uh you know brush their teeth or why they should uh you know like uh, use a certain antiseptic etc etc uh, uh it's important to make sure that the message is being delivered like regular phone call aati hai uh, you just cut the phone right away if the phone yeah. call starts with their name uh in amitabh bachan ji's voice uh you know it will probably deliver the message a lot better because he'll be curious to know what's what's next so more yeah. than just the innovation of it i think the impact of it is extremely interesting and and, and i think you know we were talking about this before the podcast began how You know, LLMs are being built out of India. It is, it is amazing. I don't know if you saw that uh, uh, message uh, from Sam Altman when he was in India when when this question yeah. was asked to him that what do you think about LLMs being built out of India? He literally, you know, said that I don't think it's possible. I don't think three percent attempt. He absolutely trashed it. In it is a leapfrog economy. It can surprise any any country. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and yeah, and in, literally in like one year, I think less than one year, there are at least three. LLM companies out of India that I know that have already been funded more than twenty five thirty million each, yeah. uh, and are just going after that LLM for India, AI for Bharat is the broader term for it. Yeah. Uh, 
that people are building for and you know there are pe- people are building llms that are indian languages first which yeah. kind of re- re- uh, you know they remove the tokenization problem uh, there was a lot of cost when you you know translated the llms uh, from uh, english to hindi but if you actually build llms grounds up uh, you know and the, the tokenization you cost get affordable less, you make it super affordable so things that people like krutham you know we're talking about what uh, reliance probably launched today tell me more about what what do you think uh, you know this the impact of that on marketing would be like these llms that are being built out of india what would the impact of that on that be? that's exactly what i told you that ai's ability to drive personalization and the language model especially for indian markets yeah is going to be a motivating factor for any startup to move into the space right we are already talking about players like you or what uh, mandy is doing on neural garage hmm. the visual dub platform yeah. there's a lot of work which is already there they are already working towards it yeah and like i said to crack india it's not just going to be english it's not going to be enough hmm. you got to go uh, vernacular you got to go vernacular and build those narrative for yeah. the many indias which exist within india right hmm. so i think sky is a limit when it comes to language models and this space what we are what we're going to be co-creating Mm. and uh, sam altman's challenge to india is i think well received and like you said a lot of people are moving into it and this is a different ecosystem what we're trying to create right so even even when we did this campaign on britannia chat gpt was the source to fetch an answer which ravi shastri was then narrating yeah. but when the question was going and the profanity layer was being controlled by us yes. which is uh, yes. our conversation ai form a uh, wonderman thompson commerce and that it was going through that yes. which is specialized in building conversational ai tech stack for years and years in the indian market hmm. the profanity that understands india specific Correct. nuances <laughs> yeah. so the question went from there and we were blocking the incorrect question which was coming in to chat gpt yeah. and when the answer was getting rendered again it was going through profanity oh, wow. yeah. so we were we were adding we are making sure that the indian nuances are being catered to hmm. so going by that i think language models and i presented uh my uh, clone language models yeah. on the conferences if you I know that yeah 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 so i could possibly speak english, english. hindi and gujarati <laughs> but i trained it for seven odd languages yes. so i was i like was kannada and Mal- yeah, i was seen speaking and the accuracy levels were like i would say what 60 70% lip sync accuracy and yeah. the numbers are even going up yeah yeah the english hindi is 90% okay. plus yeah so the audience was thrilled looking at that saying that and i got a lot of inquiries where they all wanted to basically render content in multiple languages so a lot of our clients say an automobile client must be launching a car in one market mm. and then they want us to sit and manually render content in 20 odd market right. 20 states where there are different price the points adaptations adaptation and, and also it's, it's going to play a solid role out there okay. i think ai is pretty much cutting across all possible tech stack that surrounds us and creativity also gets enhanced when you are able to add those language models right in some form and yeah. for us you to do it manually becomes very difficult so i think very excited about this space of how Indian startup ecosystem like yours are going to work on that language model per se yeah. and are going to add to uh, what the large LLM which these large companies are building. Yeah. It's, it's clearly an era of collaboration. It's not yeah. you competing against OpenAI or absolutely, absolutely. Google Gemini or anyone else. It's about all of us coming together, yes. working together to build a solution. Yeah. And that that's exactly what agencies like us ensure that the best of all partnership comes into picture okay. best of all talent they work together yeah. and they pull off a campaign which is of great value to marketers mm. and one other thing that i really was fascinated by uh, was the work you showed on fiki frames uh, want to go deeper into that i got a print out actually uh, can we get that we are the screen what is going on here <laughs> so what i've been doing is now since i've been running a lot of uh, talks on creative ai yeah i thought maybe use an ai engineered picture which is very popular in the web this is my personal favorite but now what i have done and taken it a notch forward is you have an iphone yeah so using your native camera which is part of camera focus marketing if you scan this image uh, the image shall ta- start talking is okay what i think it should <laughs> uh, but everything is on the staging server this is another startup who has helped me build this like a native cam hello everyone I is it oh wow okay. step into the future yeah. of creativity at fiki frames oh 2024 my God. As WPP and Group M India's emerging tech lead, oh, I invite you all oh, wow. to our session, shaping the future of moving. creativity <laughs> in the digital age. This is interesting. This is super cool. I mean, you can do a lot of creative work using this. Wow! And imagine now we are also looking at if there's a creative ad and if there is a character which you can actually pick up the character, place it in real life, do some level of gamification, create some buzz. 
Yeah, so yeah, sky is the limit to AI, and this image is my personal favorite. This was a new high. I mean, let's close on this high. Thank you so much, uh, Neeraj, for joining and showing us such cool stuff and te- talking to us about the future of marketing and AI and the amalgamation of both of the, you know the worlds. And thank you so much for being so supportive to the entire community. And you know, I'm representing the startup community here uh, and thanking you for all the love and the uh, you know blessings that you've showered over us. Thank you so much thank for being a part of my channel, Preet, and I wish you all the best. And we'll keep jamming on some really powerful creative campaigns. Absolutely. And together, I look forward to creating global headlines with you as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Leisha.